We'd been awaiting this week who was going to be the VP pick for Joe Biden. And yesterday, um, Emma Viglin and myself made our last predictions. And um, Emma, I believe, picked Karen Bass, if I remember correctly. And I picked, of course, the correct one. And it was <laughs> Kamala Harris, which we found out not long after the show happened. There was no reason to throw Emma under the bus there, but I worked it in. No, so, no, uh, no reason. It's Emma, throw her under the bus. Exactly. JR, uh, we have our VP pick. It's Kamala Harris. First question, are you at all surprised or is this who you thought it would end up being? Uh, not surprised. In fact, I'd have been disappointed if he didn't do this because there would have been there would have been a chance for everyone to then scour and trying to figure out the reasons why he chose someone else. So even at, if, when you choose the obvious pick, then the outrage has to come because we need something to talk about. Oh my God, he chose Kamala. You know what that means? Because if he didn't, you'd be like, oh my God, he didn't choose Kamala. You know what that means? Like it's just we kind of have to have something incendiary to talk about when it's obvious what he was going to do and what he probably should have done just for himself. Then we're talking about I'm talking about him for his his uh, his presidential aspirations. Yeah. And what he should have done for himself, this was the right pick. Just keep it real. Yeah. Whether or not whether or not it's gonna progress progressive values to the degree to which you think it will, we're talking about right now Joe Biden, who is the presumptive nominee, chose uh, Kamala Harris. I don't think that's radical. Got to be honest. Mm -hmm. Oh well, we're gonna have a debate in a little bit about how radical it's being presented <laughs> as, but we, we can have our own opinion first. Um, so I will say, I think of the people that had been considered that he was considering, um, and I think that the actual I never considered the list as wide as people presented it as. He wasn't yeah. really thinking about Barbara Lee. I don't think nope. he was really thinking about Karen Bass. Nope. I don't. I just don't. Nope. Um, and I don't think Elizabeth Warren. And so I would say of the people he was actually considering, not the people I would be considering, the people he was considering, I would have chosen Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. Knowing everything that I know about her, I think she was probably the best of the people he was really considering um, and might, might actually help him. I don't think that generally VP picks matter all that much in terms of actually changing the vote significantly. And certainly some, like I don't think Susan Rice was gonna swing 5% of the electorate or anything. Right. Um, but I think that he could have done worse in that. Again, this is of the people he was actually considering. Right. Like I have a long list of names, none of them were being debated. So. So anyway, yes. I, I know JR, you thought that we would disagree. What what do you think the disagreement was going to be or, or okay. might still be? Yes, yeah, so well, I was thinking the potential was that uh, maybe he should have gone a different route because of the nature of including the entire left or also many Democrats who don't like his direction. You know, and he's it, to see if he's appearing to actually start listening to progressives, at least a little bit. And at least maybe put someone in that has a couple more progressive values and and aspirations and things directions you want the country to go, mm -hmm. you know, then it would have been her. But that's the thing, uh, Biden isn't a progressive, so it kind of shoots himself in the foot to then push for a hardcore left progressive. So I get trying to include the rest of the party, but in yeah. choosing the vice presidential pick, I don't think that's the way to go. It'll have to be through policy. Now, if he starts listening to uh, folks that have something to say, then fine, do so. But that's going to come later after progressives have something to say other than, okay, well, you're on your own now. Like, yeah. it needs to be like the, the exchange still needs to happen to where we can say and do things and push it in a certain way and we get some of those victories uh, rather than expecting him to put in someone in place that already has all those things put in place. That person didn't win the primary. Yeah, I look, look, I think that if he had. If he had wanted to send a signal to the left um, of the names that he would have considered for that, and again, it's not the list that I would consider, I think he could have gone with like Barbara Lee potentially. Um, the thing is, would that actually really significantly change his presidency? I don't think that any pre vice presidential pick is really gonna change it. So to some extent, I, I would be a little bit annoyed and I guarantee the actual uh, reaction would have been, Okay, so he picked a, you know a little a little bit more progressive of a VP pick, but like, is that really going to change his policy? So I, I think we would have been cynical anyway. Yeah, because I still think it would have been better. Yeah, people um, don't people don't trust him. So therefore, if he did something that would yeah. fall more in the lines of what progressives would have wanted, they'd have been like, okay, what's the ploy here? Yeah, you know, what's the idea? Yeah, and. And I mean, the, the reason that the VP pick is more important than it is usually is that, of course, Biden is 
is old and you know it's it it seems almost certainly that whoever becomes VP is going to be running for president four years later. And there's even a chance that hypothetically could become president even earlier. What, what do you think about those two possibilities? Oh, but I'm sorry about what was that second part? The one that it's definitely setting this person up to run in four years and that even hypothetically in one or two or three years, you know, God forbid could become president. Like if that's part of the plan, I don't, I don't. No, 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 not the plan, but that that raises the stakes. That yeah, reality, I mean, trying I think. to get a, a vice president to pick that's this kind of of, a, of a, a name that had already run for president a little bit in this cycle that they have a national name for themselves. Sure, I think so because you know we have our political legacies that we like to push in this country. Um, you know, once someone's in office, it's expected they're supposed to take a second term no matter what they did, and that oh yeah, second term, four more years. They the chant is four more years based off of what they just yeah. chant four more years, and that's for both parties. You always do that. Our guys, in, our guys in, in the office, let's push it again. So therefore, if you have then Biden gets his four years and then potentially another, we're set up for now another four years, then the vice presidential candidate jumps in and becomes the next candidate. So yeah, it's, I think it's, it goes along with the nature of our game that we would expect that to happen, especially with someone as vibrant and as young and as potentially popular as Kamala Harris can be. Mm-hmm. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.